Jerusalem. So may mga ibang tao dito. Nagsusulat sila ng petition sa isang papel. At sinusuksok nila sa gitna ng, or in between yung mga stones. Pero may mga ibang tao naman. Sinusubungan nilang itya yung papel. Bethlehem. The Silver Star, the place where Jesus Christ was born. Nazareth. Hi, Joseph! <laughs> How are you? It's been such a long time! Mga lugar na pamilyar sa pandinig, ngayon, mararating na natin. Ito ang Israel. At ito na ang pinakamalayong biyahe natin, Dijeros. Sa pagkakatong ito, ang magiging tour guide natin, si Jesus. Sisilipin natin ang mga lugar na may kinalaman sa buhay niya mula sa kanyang pagsilang. There's a Latin inscription on it. It means in English, Here Jesus Christ was born of Virgin Mary. At para sa mga hindi masyadong reliyoso dyan, don't you worry, sulit na biyahe pa rin to. Marhaba. Marhaba. Say it with eh. Marhaba. 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 Yeah. Maasim. Maasim. Lahat dito maasim. It's the first of our anniversary specials, mga biyero. Tatlong taon na tayong bumabiyahe and we are definitely going all out. Ano? Sama kayo? Mula Maynila, humigit ko mulang labing dalawang oras ang biyahe papuntang Istanbul, Turkey, ang ating magiging gateway to Israel. Pero tip, maglaan ng sapat na oras para sa biyahe mula sa inyong bahay papuntang airport. Dahil international flight ito, dapat at least 3 hours before your departure ay nasa check-in counter na kayo. Dahil gabi ang flight natin, itutulog na lang natin ang mahabang oras ng biyahe. Huwag mag-alala dahil may full board meal sa official airline partner natin sa biyahe na to na Turkish Airlines. Marami rin movies at games. Kaya kung naubos na ang antok nyo, hoy, attack na sa laro at mag-movie marathon na lang hanggang makarating sa ating unang layover. We just landed here in Istanbul after 12-hour flight. We're going to go to Istanbul Airport for about two, two and a half hours before we take our Tel Aviv plane ride, which is our final destination. Tel Aviv is in Israel, and Israel will be our first location. Let's go over it. Nga-nga. landed sa Tel Aviv Airport and starting to like it. Nice airport. Para sa tour natin sa Israel, magkisimula tayo sa bayan ng Nazareth kung saan sinasabing nagpakita ang anghel na si Gabriel sa Birhing Maria. Dito sa loob ng simbahan na to, ang Basilica of the Annunciation. Matatagpuan ang shrine na sinasabing mismong naging bahay ni Maria. Dito raw nagwika si Gabriel na magdadalang tao si Maria. At papangalanan niyang Jesus ang sanggol. Litaw na litaw ang kagandahan at mga detalye ng simbahan ito. Sa labas, makikita ang ilang artwork at musik na mula sa iba't ibang bansa. 
Kasama na rito ang sa Pilipinas. Mula Nazareth, sinasabing naglakbay ang buntis na si Maria kasama ang asawang si Jose patungong Bethlehem. Sa panahon ngayon, hindi basta-basta ang makalabas-masok sa Bethlehem. Kailangan munang dumaan sa border na naghihiwalay sa mga Palestinian-controlled territories. Ramdam na ramdam ang kaibahan ng uri ng pumuhay sa magkabilang panig. So medyo it's still surreal that nandito ako ngayon sa Bethlehem. Hmm. Bethlehem kung saan dito po yung nanganak si Yeso Cristo. Just a few, probably a hundred meters away from here is the Church of Nativity. Across the valley is Jerusalem. And then 180 kilometers from here, up north, is Nazareth. Kung saan ang galing si Joseph and Mary bago sila dumating dito. Si Matumak, tinahak nila 180 kilometers para lang mga anak si Mary dito. Bethlehem na nakikita ko ngayon, malayong malayo sa tahimik at payapang lugar na naiisip ng marami. Isa na itong bustling metropolis, kung saan dagsa ang mga pilgrim at turista. Isa sa mga dinarayo rito ay ang Shepherd's Fields kung saan nagpakita raw ang mga anghel sa mga pastol ng tupa para ibalita ang pagsilang ni Jesus. You know that the shepherds of that time, they used to live in cave with their sheep. So now, soon we'll go inside one of the cave to see how the cave look like. Okay? And usually, the sheep, the sheep at the back of the cave and the shepherds by the entrance of the cave talking, chatting to each other, and suddenly the sky blooming, and the message of the Lord came to them, fear not. Bawat tour group, kinakailangan may kasamang professionally licensed guide. Sila ang bahalang magpaliwanag at magkwento tungkol sa bawat lugar, magbigay ng mga trivia, at sila rin ang tumatayong translator ng bawat grupo. All in one na! Para sa biyahe ni Drew Crew, isa si Adele sa aming mga naging official guide. Ten years. Oh. I know. I start to train to be lawyer. So you're saying so this is just a sideline? This is my job. My professional is tourist guy. Ah, okay. But I studied recently oh. law and I start to train. But while I'm training, they didn't give money. So I have to wear. Right. Oh, I'm sure you already had Filipino tourists, yeah? Yes, a lot. I work a lot with Filipinos. <laughs> so I'm sure you know a couple of Filipino words as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. Komestaka. Okay, very good. Mabuti. Mabu okay. Maganda. Maganda. Okay. <laughs> Salamat. Salamat. I'm sure that kind of helps you also yeah. converse with yeah. other people. But well, what can you what can you share with your language that right. I can learn? Yalla. Yalla is. Yes. Let's go. Yalla. Let's it's go. It's like YOLO. <laughs> yalla, yalla. Yalla. Let's go. Yalla. Yeah. What else? Uh, marhaba. Marhaba. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes. Can you just say hi? Marhaba. Marhaba. Ah, yeah, okay. Say it. Say it with eh. Marhaba. Mar. Marhaba. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> so when you say hi, hi. Say salam. Easier. Say, say salam. There you salam. go. Salam is easier. Yeah. Salam. Salam. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Say salam. Sa pagbabalik ng biyahe ni Drew. Sa isang malita kwarto, matatagpuan ang Silver Star. Dito sinasabing inilagay ang mismong sabsaban kung saan ipinanganak si Heso Kristo. Sinasabi nila na if ever man bibili kayo ng pasalubong kapag bibisita kayo sa Holy Land, Bethlehem would be your best bet dahil dito yung nagagaling yung mga factories ng souvenirs. So, ibig sabihin nun, mas mura. At, wala pang tax. Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko? Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko?
Ilan daang metro ang layo sa Shepherd's Fields, dinala kami ni Adele sa isang mall. Dahil shortcut ito papunta sa Church of the Nativity, ang lugar kung saan daw mismo ipinanganak si Yesu Cristo. And that's the Church of the Nativity. To the right, the big building is the Armenian Monastery. Because you know that the Church of Nativity is surrounded by three monasteries. Armenian, there's the Franciscan, and there's the Greek Orthodox. Let's go to the Church of Nativity to see the church which was built over the place where Jesus was. The smallest one is from the 16th century. They did it small for two reasons. First reason, security, to prevent soldiers to enter the basilica of the church on their horse. The other reason, humility, to let the people bow when they enter the holiest place in the Christian world. And this is which we call the Eye of the Needle. Itinayo ang original na simbahan noong 327 AD ni Constantine the Great, anak ni Emperor Caesar at ni Reina Elena ng Roma. Sa paglipas ng panahon, at ilang digmaan, nakailang reconstruction at redesign na rin ang simbahang ito. Hanggang ngayon ay patuloy ang rehabilitation sa napakalumang simbahan na ito. Sa isang malita kwarto, matatagpuan ang Silver Star. Dito sinasabing inilagay ang mismong sabsaban kung saan ipinanganak si Heso Kristo. Maswerte tayo at hindi pa masyadong marami ang mga deboto na bumisita kasabay natin. Sa karaniwang araw, aabutin ka raw ng higit dalawang oras sa pila. Pwedeng hawakan ng Australia at magdasal dito. If you look at the silver star here, it marks the place where Jesus Christ was born. There's a Latin inscription on it. It means in English, here Jesus Christ was born of Virgin Mary. As you see the star, it's with 14 angles. Why 14? 14 because it represents that Jesus Christ came from 14 generations. Also, it represents the 14 stations of the cross of the Vedalos. So it's 14 to show the connection between the birth of Jesus and the death of Jesus Christ. After Jesus Christ was born here, his mother wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger. That's the place of the manger, not the original, because the original manger, the Crusades in the 12th century, they took to Rome, to St. Maria Majori Church. Now, the Church of Nativity, since the 18th century, because there were too much conflict between the different Christian groups about the right to take care of the church, for that reason, the Ottoman, in the 18th century, they divided the Church of Nativity to three churches. So, and here in Bethlehem, we celebrate three Christmas, 24th, 25th of December, Catholic, 6th, 7th of January, Greek, 18th of January, Armenian. Hi. So, we're here in the... Souvenir shop dito sa Bethlehem. Now, sinasabi nila na if ever man bibili kayo ng pasalubong kapag uh, bibisita kayo sa Holy Land, Bethlehem would be your best bet. Dahil dito yung nagagaling yung mga factories ng souvenirs. So, ibig sabihin nun, mas mura. At, wala pang tax. Iba't ibang souvenir items ang meron dito. Wala rosaries, crucifix, keychains, at iba pa. Isa sa tampok ng mga produkto dito ay ang mga sculpture na gawa mula sa olive wood. Pero ang kakaibang nakatawag pansin sa amin ay ang kakaibang pendants na to. We also design our own jewelry. The five crosses also representing the five wounds of Jesus Christ. There is a special meaning to this cross that basically say, may this cross spread from Jerusalem all over the world. Opens up on the meaning. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Para sa mga hindi makapili kung ano ang bibilhin, may personal shopping assistant na matyagang magmumongkahi kung anong items nila ang maganda at dapat niyong bilhin. Good stuff, man. Thank you, thank you. Susunod sa biyay ni Drew. May ganito pa mamaya. It's good that they thought of these tools. You wanna try? 
I'll try my best. High paying job, high paying job. <laughs> She'll keep a roof over your head and feed you. There you go. At ito pa, kaya dyan lang kayo. Parang ito yung dinidip ko kapag nagko-communion ako. Yun yung lasa. Yun. It's actually refreshing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, thank you. Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko? Biyahe ni Drew would like to thank. Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko? Isang maliit na bansa lamang Israel na may laking humigit kumulang 21,000 square kilometers. Kumpara mo naman sa Pilipinas na halos 300,000 square kilometers. Punta naman tayo sa bayan ng Nazareth kung saan sinasabing lumaki at namuhay si Jesus. Sa ngayon, isang modernong bayan na ang Nazareth. Kitang-kita ang disiplina ng mga mamayan dito. Malinis ang mga kalsada at ang mga motorista. Sumusunod sa batas trafiko kahit walang nagbabantay sa kanila. Noong panahon ni Jesus, ang Nazareth daw ay isang namamayag pag na syudad dahil dito matatagpuan ang ilang industriya na mahalaga noong panahon na yon. Dito sa Nazareth Village, nire-recreate ang paraan ng pamumuhay noong panahon ni Jesus para makita at maunawaan ng mga turista. Now, of course, when we started this project, we wanted everything to be as accurate as possible. When you're recreating the first century life, you're creating so many biblical connections. Now, in terms of trees that we have around, we have over 100 olive trees that were transplanted here. The oldest one that we have is about 400 years old. Other kinds of trees that we have are almond trees. They have this very beautiful white flower. Here, try it. So this is the, the nut? No, no, this no, is the not. whole thing. All right. Okay. Masim. It's very uh, sour. Uh, a lot of people actually uh, dip it in, in salt too. So uh, they're unique. Try this. It'll be sour. So okay. Just to know what to expect. Masim, lad. Dito masim. Very sour. But interestingly enough, when you drink water after it, the water tastes sweet. Now, a lot of people nowadays take medication or take extra pills, you know, for right. vitamins. And mm -hmm. Back then, they did not need it because they're picking these up and they're eating them and they supply that. Ang mga kasada raw ay ginawa kung saan dumadaan noon ang mga donkey o buriko. Ito raw ay dahil alam ng mga buriko kung saan ang pinakamadaling daan para makarating sa paroroonan nila. Isa sa mga importanteng hanap buhay ng mga panahon na yon ay ang pagpapastol ng tupa at iba pang hayop. Ito ay dahil sa ipinagbabawal ng relihiyon ng mga Hudyo, ang Judaism, ang pagkain ng baboy. Isa ring industriya sa Nazareth ay ang paggawa ng alak. Inaapakan ng mga ubas sa mga bato para makuha at maipon ang katas nito. Paaraw ang gamit nila sa pagkatas sa ubas para maramdaman nila ang mga buto ng ubas at hindi nila ito madurog. This is probably one of the most important archaeological findings. In some areas, we found places with straight cuts in the bedrocks, but it's actually the only first century wine press that remains in Nazareth. They would bring in the grapes, they put them up there, and they did the pressing barefoot. Sa ganitong paraan, ay naiiwasan ang pagpait ng katas ng ubas. Pero ang pinakasikat na yata sa lahat ng industriya o trabaho noon ay ang pagkakarpintero. Carpenter. Yeah, his name. Joseph. Hi, Joseph! <laughs> such a long time! Yeah. Oh. 2,000 years? Yeah, 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Now, uh, it was easy for us to call him Joseph. And uh, 
The thing that we shock people by is saying that Joseph and Jesus were not carpenters. Uh, they are actually what we call tekton. Literally, it means builder. So arche means first, like he's a person in charge. Architecto. Right. Now, a lot of the tools you'll see here we're familiar with because nothing really changed until maybe a hundred years ago or so. The thing you start a fire with, but it's actually a drill. A drill? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. Up here. Yes, good. I have to do this now. <laughs> it's good that they thought of these tools. Now, the interesting thing back then is that family members built their houses next to each other. Okay. Um, they shared walls and they were able to connect their houses together like this. Uh, this is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. She's a weaver and she makes blankets made of wool. What's unique about this is it's 100% made at Nazareth Village. So it's wool that we shear off of our sheep. Mm -hmm. Then we wash it, of course, because it's dusty and muddy. And then you move on um, to dyeing it. That is wool that we colored just yesterday. Like if you're thinking a cheap color, for example, this will be a cheap color. For this, we used onion skins. Okay. So uh, for this one, we use saffron very expensive spice so this is an expensive color yet blues and purples these were the most expensive colors because to do them you need a specific snail from the Mediterranean do you want to try I'll try my best hold this there high paying job high paying job <laughs> she'll keep a roof over your head and feed you there you go Para kayong nag-time space warp o lumundag sa mga pahina ng Biblia sa paglalakad dito sa Nazareth Village. Pero hindi lamang sightseeing ang pwede niyong gawin dito dahil meron din sila dito kainan kung saan tradisyonal ang paghahanda at pagluluto ng mga pagkain. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lord our God, King of the Universe, Creator of the Fruit of the Wine, Vine, thank you God that we will be in the New Jerusalem with Yeshua drinking at your table. Pupunta naman tayo sa Jericho, ang sinasabing pinakamatandang syudad sa buong mundo. Ayon sa New Testament, dito raw nagpunta si Heso Kristo matapos binyagan ni John the Baptist sa River Jordan. Oh wow. This is a big Tagalog. Tagalog? Ah, oh, very good, huh? Mabuti. Pick money gratis. Sikamor nags eat all thing. Pag bibigyan lang sila ng libre. Sempre. Sample muna. Bibili kayo. Bayad mamaya. Bayad lang mamaya. Ito yung dates. There's a specific type of dates na nagagaling lang dito. Sobrang sarap daw. Para mga biyara na dito ngayon sa city of Jericho, um, sa tuktok na ito ay ang Mount of Temptation. Uh, sa Biblia, dyan daw nagstay si Jesus Christ 40 days and 40 nights. It's actually 1.3 kilometers up there. But para sa mga turista, hindi tayo pwede umakyat. Picture-picture uh, lang, uh, testing the, or sampling the uh, their local delicacies. You can buy their delicacies, of course, and then they have their store there, which is the Temptation Gallery. Uh, dried fruits, we've got souvenirs, we've got dates, which is very local here and endemic here. Bilang isang sikat na tourist spot, syempre, naariyan ng sakmutsaring souvenir items. Kaya ng kefya o mga scarf na ginagamit bilang pananggalang sa init at alikabok ng disyerto. 
yun mga biyero. Ang susunod natin ngayon ay mga kefia or yung mga middle uh, uh, eastern scarves in general. On my right, nax, kita niyo naman yan. Wow, angas. So it's what nila parang medyo black and white. Uh, actually, sila yung mga Palestinians or yung mga, uh, mga Palestinians ay nagsusuot ng gantong color combination ng mga kefia. To my left, different colors na yan. May konting green, solid black, na may konting dash of white. Well, before, daw, sinasabi nila, nomads yan. Pero ngayon, it's actually just a type of style. Fashion. Pero kami ni Coach, kami mga Jordanians. At not just any ordinary Jordanians. Dahil kapag pula, kami ay royalty. No word na. Pwede rin sumakay at magpa-picture-picture sa camel dito. Libre ang pagsakay. Thank you. <laughs> Pero may bayad ang pagbaba. Five dollars. <laughs> Matapos ang 40 days at 40 nights sa Mount of Temptation, pumunta raw si Jesus sa susunod dating destinasyon, ang Galilee. Dito, nagsimula ng magturo ng kanyang mga aral si Jesus. Naganap daw dito sa Cana, Galilee, ang kauna-unahang nilagro ni Jesus nang gawin niyang alak ang tubig sa isang kasal. On the third day, there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Sa ngayon, mapupuntahan ng mga pilgrim dito ang isang simbahan na may espesyal na sorpresa para sa mga mag-asawa. Sister, gano'n nakatagal ka na dito? Seven years. So, Sister, araw-araw, uh, ano po yung ginagawa niyo dito? We are serving for the pilgrims na coming sa Kristan dito. Mm -hmm. Tapos, mga different languages, different nations. Ganyan. Usually, they come here na mag-renew ng marriage nila. Yun nga yung sinasabi nila, mga biyero, lalo na sa mga nagsiselebrate ng mga 30th, 40th, or 50th, or so on and so forth. Sikat tong lugar na to sa pag-renew ng vows nila. Di ba? Lalo na pag-asawa. Eh, ano din, may miracle din sa mga couples na yung miracle na nangyari to, usually sa may sakit at saka ibehira lang sa may sakit. Pero yung uh, sa marriages na about to be broken, Ganon. Kasi yung iba kasi, they're telling na after their pilgrimage, mag-separate na sila. But it's a surprise for them na naano sila. Okay, still work things out tapos na. Kasi sometimes hindi ina-announce ng guide o ng, ng tour leader na mayroong renewal. Sometimes surprise lang. Ay, ba, parang, parang proposal, parang uh, ganyan. Ganon, ganon. So yung nakikita natin sa loob niyan, actually hindi tayo pwede pumasok dahil may ongoing na mass, no? but from the looks of it, may mga nagre-renewal of vows. Definitely more than one couple. Sa ilalim ng simbahan, may mini-museum ng lumang istruktura ng orihinal na simbahan. At sa labas ng simbahan, o ano pa, eh di souvenir items galore na naman. This is probably the closest that we can get, no? Experiencing the miracles. They have, yeah, sweet wine. Which is actually this as well. Anyway, nagbibigay sila ng samples. Eight, hindi para sa akin yung kasama ko sila. Huwag naman kayong maging judgmental. Anak nang tinapa naman. But, tikman natin. Wow. 
parang ito yung dinidip ko kapag nagko-communion ako. Yun yung lasa. So yun, yung lasa niya talaga, ito yung parang iniinom ng pare kapag nangyumisa. Tapos kuminsan nga, di ba, pag lumili niya yung mga tao, tapos na they accept Holy Communion, minsan, di ba, dinidip yung host siya dun sa mismong blood of Christ or wine. Yun yung lasa niya. Matamis. Yun. It's actually refreshing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Susunod sa biyay ni Drew. No fish in this side. No fish? Jesus said, cast the net to the other side. Other side. Other side. <laughs> if we catch one fish, that's a miracle. One of the major fish that we can study here is St. Peter's fish. Or, it's more known to us than tilapia. May ganito pa mamaya. Kahit sinong taong hindi uh, religious, no? Eh, makaka-appreciate sa architecture, sa, sa fine details, sa makikita dito sa simbahan na to. I mean, yung mosaic na ginawa nila, napakaganda. Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko? It's summer! And you know what that means, Beros. Pantay biyahe na naman. Thank you sa biyahe na naman! Tulad ng nakaugalian sa nakaraang labing isang taon. On duty na naman kami para magbigay ng serbisyong totoo na may bonus pang matatamis ng ngiti para sa lahat ng umarangkada sa kanya-kanyang destinasyon nitong nakalipas na Semana Santa. Thank you sa biyahe ni Drew. Bukod sa inihanda namin mga regalo, Thank you sa biyahe ni Drew. Game na game ang ilang mga kapuso sa hamon ng giant maze na to. At para masiguro ang patuloy na ligtas niyong pagbiyahe, nagkaroon din ng libreng blood pressure checkup. Galing pa kami ng Bicol, wala kaming tulog. Kaya madalas sumakit. Salamat po! Let's regados ang saya at sorpresa sa bantay biyahe. Dahil yan sa walang patid na suporta ng ating mga kaagapay sa pag-aadid ng servisyong totoo. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng nakisaya at patuloy na sumusuporta sa Biyahe ni Drew at GMA News TV. Itakit sa susunod na Bantay Biyahe! Ano? Sama ka sa biyay ko? Malaking bahagi ng buhay at pagtuturo ni Jesus ay naganap sa paligid ng Galilee. Dito niya ikinwento ang kanyang mga parabola. At dito rin siya nagpamalas ng mga milagro at iba pa. Good morning mga bihero. Ang uh, nasa harapan natin ay ang Sea of Galilee. It's actually not a sea but it's a lake. A big lake. And it's actually the major source of drinking water here in Israel. At sasakay tayo sa isang uh, mahalagang bangka. Isa sa milagrong ginawa ni Jesus sa Sea of Galilee ay ang pagpapakalma ng dagat sa gitna ng bagyo. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm very good. How are you? No, not, not big <laughs> We have only one big shot. Huh? Only one. Only one, only one. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay, this is your boat? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go inside? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's go inside. I'll just go sit there. Iba't ibang nationality siyempre ang sumasay sa bangka dito sa Galilee. At handa naman raw lagi ang kapitan ng bangka na magpatugtog ng national anthem ng mga bansang ito habang itinataas ang kanilang bandila. Truly a warm welcome for all. Alright, so just a couple of interesting facts here, mga bihar. Nandita yun sa Sea of Galilee. At dito yung uh, lugar kung saan uh, naglakad si Jesus Cristo. Just northern side or northern tip of 
the Sea of Galilee daw. It's just weird na babasa mo dati tapos na nandito ka na at na-experience mo na. Speaking of mga turista, kung anong pwede nyo magawa dito, well, uh, usually, that area, nagkakaroon sila ng misa. At uh, mga tao, kumakanto din at sumasayaw. Hi everybody, my name is Peter. Hi Peter. I'm a fisherman. And I want to show you how they used Kesenet like the 2,000 years ago. Nagkakaroon din ng demonstration ng makalumang paghuli ng isda. Katulad nung panahon daw ni Jesus. In the lake, we have the 27 kind fish. The popular fish, that's the tilapia. We have the snake fish, we have the carp, the capito. No fish in this side. No fish? If we catch one fish, that's a miracle. If we catch two fish, I go to walk on the water. Whoa. But if we catch three fish, you and me walk on the water. Let's go. Two, three. Oh, it is a big fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Very good fish. Very fresh. It's a wooden fish. Ah, okay. <laughs> Halos isang oras din ang biyahe ng bangkang ito. At kung akala nyo ay puro katahimikan, pangingisda, at panalangin lang ang gagawin dito, <laughs> nagkakamali kayo. It's time to party! Bago matapos ang boating trip, meron uli kayong mapagpipilian na souvenir items. Makalipas ang ilang taon ng pangangaral, sinasabing isinama ni Jesus ang kanyang mga alagad na si Peter, James at John sa taas ng isang bundok at yon ang susunod nating pupuntahan. Inside the church, down below, there is a glass. Below the glass, there is a rock. According to the tradition, on that rock, Jesus transfigured in front of Peter, John, and James. Mount Tabor, what is, what is Tabor? Isolated mountain. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the valley, all of a sudden, you see a mountain. Right. So the meaning of Tabor, like in the middle of the big valley, mm -hmm. all of a sudden. So uh, this is like a belly button, so. Yes. Uh, Ito ang Mount Tabor, ang mundo kung saan sinasabing naganap ang Transfiguration of Jesus kung kailan nabalot ng liwanag ang kanyang buong pagkatao at pagpakita rin ng mga propetang sina Moses at Elijah. Ginaray ito ng mga deboto upang masilayan ang sinasabing mga bato na mismong niyapakan ni Jesus noon. It's just a mountain right, right. with rocks, and this was the rock where the transfiguration took place. Kahit sinong taong hindi uh, religious, no, ay makaka-appreciate sa architecture, sa, sa fine details, sa makikita dito sa simbahan na to. I mean, yung mosaic na ginawa nila, napakaganda. So yung kumikinang-kinang, all the... Sobrang detalyado kasi yung disenyo ng bato. Kitin niyo na rin yung ceilings, yung surroundings. I'm just blown away with, with the beauty of the whole structure. Naging importante yung military fortress din ng lugar bago pa man ipinanganak si Jesus. Ilang mga lumang simbahan mula pa noong 4th century AD ang itinayo at nagiba sa Mount Tabor. Para sa ilan, magandang vantage point ang Mount Tabor at nagagamit nila ang taas nitong halos 600 meters above sea level. Para sa mga 
Nagagandahan Selfie. Alam niyo kung pupunta kayo sa isang bagong bansa, tapos nun, automatically, you're gonna compare it to another place that you've been to. You know? Pagdating ko dito, absolutely wala akong compare It's so different. It's... I can't really explain it. I mean, didn't come here... Well, came here without any expectations, but... Ibang iba sa nakikita ko sa news, eh. It's just so calm and... Actually, it's beautiful. I mean, hindi ko akalain na magiging ganito kaganda. I mean, it's not just for... for uh, religious people who want to experience nga or want to be part of the history na nababasa natin sa Biblia. Hindi eh, kahit... You know, I'm, not, I'm not a very religious guy, but I still appreciate all the sights and sceneries here. It's beautiful. Next week, silipin naman natin ang Old City of Jerusalem, isa sa pinakamahalagang lugar para sa tatlong pinakamalaking reliyon, ang Kristyanismo, Judaismo, at Islam. Ang mga huling sandali sa buhay ni Kristo, dito naganap. Marami pang iba na dapat abangan, mga bihero!